All right, uh, let's get started with our prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, who is in heaven, thank you for saving us from the eternal punishment. Uh, we are here in front of your words, and we have come together to listen to your voice. This moment, we need help and guidance. The Holy Spirit walk in us and guide us until the end of this session. We are going to open the scripture uh, about the evangelism and instruct us and guide us with the truth and let us uh, have great resolution in our heart to evangelize the lost soul. From the beginning to the end, we only rely on you. This is our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross instead of us. Amen. <clears throat> All right, open your Bible, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, let me read, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and teaching. <clears throat> uh, all right. Uh, thank you for coming here. Mm. Uh, this time, uh, we have a plan to uh, study about evangelism, the Christian evangelism. Uh, we all uh, we we all gonna have a three session. Today is the first session. The topic is why should we evangelize? Uh, actually, everything starts from here. If you don't have any reason uh, to preach the gospel, uh, you are not going to say anything about Christ. And uh, yes, probably you give thanks to God; uh, He definitely saved you. But evangelism is a different story. Being a Christian is easy. Uh, we just rely on what Jesus had done for us on the cross. But being a Christian is a different story. So, uh, without being a Christian, uh, it's really hard to share the true gospel in this world. And first session is why should we evangelize? And second topic is uh, be ready to preach the word. Uh, in order to preach the word of God, uh, there is some qualification. And also, in order to equip God's uh, power and strength, uh, we need to be uh, ready uh, mm, uh, as a right person who will receive God's strength and power from heaven. And third, uh, third is practical way, how to evangelize, how to meet people, how to uh, open the conversation, and then how to guide them uh, to the church. And then somebody who really resisted to listen again and again. And then how could we convince and uh, persuade them? Uh, this is kind of um, the practical things. So uh, today we're going to have uh, session one and two. The first session, uh, why should we uh, evangelize? We just read about the holy and heavy and a serious uh, commandment uh, from God here. Chapter 4, verse 1 said, This is really heavy expressions. I charge you, therefore, before God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Uh, <clears throat> this is one of the uh, heavy words, a heavy commandment of God in the Bible. Uh, actually, evangelism is our uh, unique obligation and duty. Every one of us, mm, we have obligation and duty as a truly born Christian. Uh, sharing and preaching the gospel, this is what we, ha uh, we have to. Uh, and also we ought to uh, uh, bring this gospel to the lost. Um, we have our own government and our own country. Uh, as a citizen, um, we also have obligation and duty uh, for this country. Mm. The, as a citizen, as a parent, uh, as a spouses, 
we have our own obligation and responsibility. Otherwise, you are really, really a strange person, right? Yes, you are a human being, but what kind of human are you? Uh, under the responsibility, uh, you could be defined as a Korean, and then you can say uh, about the, your nationality, right? Uh, Korean citizen, uh, he, uh, we also have four uh, duties, right? Obligation. What was that? Paying tax and education and labor, having labor, and also uh, joining military service, right? Uh, we have four uh, obligations. Uh, because of uh, Korean, uh, oh, we have this obligation and responsibility, right? Likewise, truly boring, as a truly boring Christian, uh, we already become a citizen uh, of heaven, right? Uh, as a citizen in heaven, uh, we also have an obligation. That's the evangelism. This is the uh, stri uh, straightly connected with the purpose of Jesus came down to the earth as a savior. One day, uh, uh, some people uh, they uh, they uh, uh, they put Jesus in risk. They made a very uh, tricky question to him: uh, Paying tax to the Caesar is okay or not? Right. So let's see, uh, Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, verse 21. <clears throat> mm. uh, let me read the 17 first. Uh, they uh, made a um, uh, very uh, sneaky question about the obligation. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus said, what was the answer? This is a really great answer of Jesus. I really love this. Verse 21, they say to him, Caesar's, um, verse 20, and he said to them, whose image and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. This, this is a really perfect answer and response of this sneaky question. So, uh, this is what we are doing here on earth. As a citizen of this country, uh, we do uh, our duty. Right? We pay tax, right? We pay bill and pay tax, and then we do our res obligation before uh, the responsibility as, uh, of this country. And also, as a Christian, truly boring Christian, we do our obligation and duty before the Christ. This is both ways. That's why you uh, usually do two, two work. The first one, give the Kassars to Kassars. And second one, Give the things belongs to God to God. This is what we are doing, right? Uh, returning, uh, what is that here? Um, verse uh, 21 said, uh, Render therefore to Kassar things that are Kassar's. That's why uh, we pay tax, right? And then we do lots of work here on earth as a citizen. But as a truly boring Christian, we do uh, this one to God, the things that are God's. Um, on other side, uh, other hands, we, we can say that as a Christian, we can give and return things, what belongs to God, to God. This is evangelism. Mm, let's see, uh, Philipp uh, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, chapter 3, the Bible declared um, <clears throat> us, verse 20, <clears throat> here, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, what Bible says? Our citizenship is in heaven. Heaven, not South Korea, right? 
our citizenship is, belongs to heaven. That's why the, among the truly born in Christian, there is no rationality, nationality, right? Nationality. We, we, we someday, uh, we flock together before the presence of the living God, right? The nationality is meaningless. So, our citizenship is, belongs to heaven. That's why we are here for the meantime as a representative of his kingdom. Do you believe this? No. <laughs> yeah. As long as your identity is solid, you could have this kind of mindset. Right? But your identity is really um, not strong and it's not perfect yet. But you would understand why God always demands something from me. Hmm? I'm, I'm really about this, um, almost suffocated because of the pressure of this world, right? But evangelism, I cannot even dream, right? So, uh, whatever um, push us, uh, we, our citizenship is very clear. Our citizenship is in heaven. Uh, we are, that's why we are responsible for this citizenship. Uh, do you agree with this? Mm. Yes. If heaven is yours, you're responsible for this, right? So, um, so, uh, the, uh, as, a, as, a citizenship, uh, as a citizen of heaven, mm, <clears throat> let's think about this one. What is the most significant uh, requirement of God from us? What is most heavy uh, and important requirement while we are staying here? That's the same purpose why Jesus uh, had to come here to preach the gospel, right? To preach the word. Now he's not here. And he remains us here, right? All what he, had, what he had to is dying on the cross. And all what we have to here is live here instead of him, right? Still, his work is ongoing. And then we are responsible to take uh, this holy mission. This is our ministry. That's why uh, some people, uh, they, uh, they don't have this kind of uh, right conception of the church. As we studied in the Bible, church is not a building, right? Church is not an organization. Church is not a, a community. Church is the people who gather together based upon the blood of Jesus Christ, right? So, uh, church is, uh, because of that reason, church is not a charitable place, right? There's, a, there's, anything, uh, there, there's anything you can consume here, right? But lots of things you have to sacrifice yourself. Church is the place to preach the gospel. Why? Right? Jesus is here, and then his remaining suffering is upon us. So, uh, church is the place to offer your sacrifice here. So, what do we expect with our own sacrifice? Yes, deny myself, self-denier, and preach the gospel. That's why, you know, because of this kind of uh, work uh, and sacrifice, you could be here, right? You could be, uh, as a true born Christian, you could be here. So uh, let's think about this. Uh, I'm standing here based upon somebody's sacrifice, right? Definitely there was someone, there was someone who sacrificed to guide you here, right? Mm. So what does the church do? What is that? Loving brothers and sisters, on the inside, right? And preach the gospel on the outside, right? On the inside, we, we love each other, right? And on the outside, we preach the gospel. This is what churches do. So let's see uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse, uh, verse 16. Let me read here. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. You know, this is another uh, delicate expression of uh, obligation and duty to preach the gospel. The Apostle Paul said, 
for necessity is laid upon me, and woe, all is me if I do not preach the gospel. Why? If, if you do not preach the gospel, you are run away. You are running away before your obligation. Do you understand? As a citizen, as a citizen of the heaven, we, we help under the obligation and duty, right? But you cannot run away from, the, from, his, from here. So, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's imagine the creation. creation. Um, before create a human being, God created a lot of things here, right, in, in this universe, right? And lots of planets, and, the, uh, and the, he created the earth, and then he filled up this earth with water and plants, so many things, and animals, right? Why he all put together here? Because of what? In order to create a human being, right? Uh, and also, that's not all. Uh, that's not the end. Uh, after creation of the human being, the creator came down to this earth, this earth jump into this world, right? Why? In order to save plants or mango tree? No. In order to save the lost soul. That's why uh, Jesus came down to the earth. This is the purpose of Jesus coming here. Right? Let's see. Um, Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. <clears throat> Verse 30. 38, Mark chapter 1, verse 38. Here, let me read. But he said to them, Let us go into next towns, that I may preach there also, because for this purpose I have come forth. Right? Uh, previously, uh, Jesus already became a famous person. And then uh, many people, they want to meet Jesus Christ. Why? Uh, in order to cure the disease and then watching some uh, miraculous work, right? Jesus became a very uh, famous person. And also every people, uh, the people, they really willing to, willing to welcome Jesus, right? But Jesus said, I don't want to stay here anymore. Why? Staying here is good, right? And people charge Jesus, right? And then this is a really good place. Why? Every, every people, every person, they really love Jesus. But Jesus wants to move on next town. Why? Here, because for this purpose I have come forth. I may preach there, right? That's why Jesus, uh, he, he didn't enjoy anything uh, which was deserved for him. Uh, but he moved on continuously to the other town to preach the gospel. Let's see, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, verse 1. <clears throat> verse 1 said, Matthew chapter 11, verse 1. Now it come to, uh, came to pass when Jesus finished uh, command, uh, commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and preach in their cities. To preach, right? He moved on continuously. Why? Staying there and then oh, feel at home there and enjoy some comfortable situation, that's not the purpose to come here. Jesus moved on continuously to preach the gospel, right? The purpose of our existence after being saved is the same. The same, uh, the same purpose, uh, we are still here. The best thing is this one. Uh, very moment, once we got saved, transferred to the heaven. This is really good for us, right? But still we are here. Instead of Jesus Christ, Jesus dying on the cross. And then he, he still saying to us, stay there instead of me. And then you can, you can carry my own, own ministry instead of me, right? You alone is not possible. And then stick together in unity. And then you can, you can do it. Right? That's why we call the church is body of Christ. We stick together. Every different person, different type and different kinds of person are here. Tons of trouble we have, right? That's why there is one solution was given to us. What is that? Love each other. Right? Love was given to fix that matter. Right? That's why somebody uh, who doesn't have any this loving heart, it's really hard to stay together. Right? 
mm. always complain and then really feel hard. You know, I don't want to join here anymore. I hate blah, blah, right? I hate the pastor. <laughs> you know, they evaporate, right? <laughs> you know, what, what was missing? This kind of complaint, huh? loving heart, right? Mm. So uh, we have to think over and over, why am I here? Right? Why God, after saved me, he put me in the middle of this holy fellowship? Why? Why still he want me back here? Hmm? Why? If we are here, uh, we could be Christ-like. Right? Let's see 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. The, um, you know, um, you should memorize these two verses and uh, meditate over and over again and again. And then you will understand, how could I leave this world with Jesus? Verse 14 and 15, let me read here. For the love of Christ compels us because we just us, that if one died for all, then all die. 15, let's read together. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Yeah, this is our identity. This is a reason, uh, exact reason why I'm here. And then why God, he brought me here in the middle of the fellowship. All what Jesus had to was dying, right? And all what we have to is living with him now. Living with him now. Right? But some, some uh, born in Christian, they forgot this one. Living here without him. You know, you cannot define this as a Christian life. Yeah, you are the just. You already got saved, right? But called as a Christian is a different matter. So, um, after saving uh, us, um, you know, let's think about this one. Uh, when God saved us, um, we uh, definitely agree with, it, agree with this one. I'm a sinner, still sinner, right? I'm not, I, 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 I'm not like angel. But what if God delivered the gospel with angel? This is really effective. I'm a sinner, I'm still sinful, I'm really resist. What God said to me over and over, I betrayed him over and over, right? I'm really reluctant and lazy to go somewhere to preach the gospel, right? But what about the angels? Really obedient, right? And then they are really skillful and really they have might power. Why God, he didn't, he doesn't have any idea to use the angel to preach the gospel. Why? Using the God, angel, more effective I suppose, right? But why God still waiting for us? Do you know why? Have you ever thought about this before? Why? Angel, they don't have any idea what is the grace, right? Uh, they they are not the one who deserve this grace, and then they don't uh, have any experience to experience this God, uh, grace. That's why, even angel they. They help us, right? They, they are helping us, but they don't know what is this grace, what is this salvation. But we are the one, as a sinner, we experience this grace. That's why, as the one who experienced this one, who have this one, we can explain and share this one. That's why, except us, there's no way, right? The angel can help us. Angel never have this uh, this eternal grace. That's why they couldn't experience about this. Let's see, First Peter chapter 1. That's why angel, they really want to know why, 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 and what is the salvation? First Peter chapter 1, um, verse 10. Uh, let me read uh, some parts here. Verse 10. Of this salvation, and uh, verse 12, the last part of the, uh, verse 12, 
um, there, which angels desire to look into. Understand? Even angel, they want to know why God so desperate to use this uncooperative Christian, and why he really desperate to deliver this gospel through them. Angel want to know of this uh, the, of this salvation. Even angel hmm, angels desire to look into what is that inside of that, right? Only truly born in Christian, we can deliver this to the lost. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. <clears throat> the last of chapter of Mark, verse 15. 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. You know, what is that? This is advice? Is this advice? Or is this kind of asking? No, this is holy commandment, right? That's why before this holy commandment, uh, when you stand before this holy commandment, we immediately, we, 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 can, we, we are able to understand that I have this obligation and this duty before the living God, right? So, uh, we, can, uh, we can return what belongs to God, to God. What is that? Soul, right? Soul. Uh, every human soul, this is really unique, only one, right? From the beginning to the end of this universe, that, that soul is a unique one. That's why... Um, we are the one who return this soul, uh, the greater than the entire universe, or we can uh, return to God. That's why uh, after the uh, death of Jesus Christ on the cross, the harvesting time is, has been initiated. And then now we are in the middle of that holy pr procedure and the holy work on earth. Almost done. Almost done. We don't have much time. Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5 said, <clears throat> Let me read here. He who gathers in summer is a white son. He who sleeps in harvest is a son who causes shame. Right? So, uh, are you gathers? Uh, are you working this field or still sleeping? Hmm? Even this uh, harvest time. Hmm? So um, this is why we are here, this moment to preach, uh, to prepare the harvesting, right? Uh, Jesus came to harvest soul. Hmm? Now is the time to harvest. Uh, we we uh, we are the one uh, who can involve this harvesting work. That's why uh, one day Jesus said, uh, "Follow me. I, I will make you a fisher of man." Right? Fisher of man. Um, could you find any uh, valuable work much more than this? Harvesting soul. Hmm? You know, sometimes the people get some big pride uh, because of their business work, right? And then uh, they really uh, want to boast, uh, boast uh, their skillful work and idea and intelligent quality, something. But in God's view, uh, somebody who really good at saving soul and help them, they are the best one. Uh, if there is another uh, much precious work, much more than the uh, fisher of man, Jesus would uh, help them to be their kind of work. Hmm? And Jesus is going to help them. Uh, you should do this in order to glorify yourself much more than anybody else here. But Jesus called them in order to be a fisher of man. Right? Let's see. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. <clears throat> Verse 18 
and 19. And Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee. So two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you a fishers of men. Right? Mm. Um, God knows uh, which way is best way to glorify themselves. Do you know uh, your way, your own way? You have no idea, right? And then you have no idea how could myself uh, is, is um, glorious. Hmm? We have no idea that way. Uh, but God knows that, right? Parents want to give best things to their children, right? Likewise, um, Jesus knows very well. And he has perfect idea how could he make them glorious. That's why uh, we want to know that same way. Hmm? He wants to make them value a true, valuable person than a fisher, fisherman. That's why they follow the Jesus. If there, is, um, if there was better work than that, he would let them do it. But if catching fish was the most valuable and most glorious things, he probably let them do it because human created for his own glory. Right? Uh, when we search the Bible, the best way to glorify myself and glorify God himself also, uh, this is evangelism. Mm. We just read about the, uh, God's holy commandments, preach the gospel, right? Uh, to all over the world, to every, every creature. This is commandment. But we have to think about this one. Some other countries, uh, they prohibited uh, evangelism, right? Uh, for example, the China, the communist, right? And what about the Muslim country? By their own law, they strictly prohibited uh, preaching the gospel, right? But we do that. We do preach the gospel. Why? The God, law of God, His commandment is a supreme law, right? Above all the nation's law, His law is there, at the top of the law, right? That's why we preach. Mark chapter 16, let's see. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Verse 15. This is our walking field. Working field. And he said to them, Go into all the world. All the world. He didn't say that except the communist, right? Except the Muslim country. All of the world. And then, um, preach the gospel to friendly people? No. Every creature. The, regardless of their religion, regardless of their thinking, their tradition, we go and preach. Because of this commandment, right? So, uh, your place, your place is your walking field. Right? Don't dreaming, go to Africa. Okay? <laughs> Uh, don't dream, go over uh, another, other, another country, right? Your place is your walking place, right? Because of that, you got saved at the point. God's law is a supreme law. That's why we, can, we cannot stop evangelize uh, because of the law of this world. Mm. The same situation happened in the time of uh, the apostles here. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Verse um, <clears throat> 29. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. But Peter and the other apostle answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Right? Rather than man. We ought to obey God rather than man. We keep on doing this, uh, whatever happened, with any cost, 
We keep on doing this over and over. Why? This is God's commandment. The Jewish people uh, constantly uh, bothered uh, and disturbed and caused lots of troubles when apostles traveled to preach the gospel. Right? But the opposite said, uh, chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, verse 17, uh, from verse 17 uh, to 20, uh, <clears throat> let me read here. Uh, but so that is spread no further among the people, let us severely threaten them, th uh, that from now on they speak to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak all at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. Uh, in various ways, uh, they threatened, and they already made a dis uh, they, uh, they decided to uh, decide uh, their own decision to let them not preach the gospel, right? But officers, they keep on doing this one continuously. Whoever they were, it doesn't matter. Uh, they were stand before the holy commandments of God, right? That's why they really do their best to obey God, and they really do their best to uh, preach the words of God. Even if you get um, the opposite people, you have no choice. We, we have to do this. Uh, there was very interesting communication between a private soldier uh, and uh, the general uh, who, who, who are head of a fleet in, uh, in battlefield. One day in the middle of a storm, uh, the general of a fleet, uh, he noticed one blinking light in the middle of the ocean, the stormy ocean. And then if we keep on going that direction continuously, definitely two ship will be crashed, right? That's why uh, send a signal. Uh, hey, who are you? Hmm? You'd better turn your way. Otherwise, I will hit you. But this, he said, no, I cannot do it. You have to turn your way. If you keep at speed, you, you're ship totally crashed sooner or later. And then this uh, general, he really got mad. Hey, who are you? Hmm? I'm Private Lee. <laughs> you know, private soldier. He's a very low-length soldier, right? How dare you can say that? Huh? Uh, how could you talk back to me? Uh, the private soldier said that. No, uh, yes, I'm a private, but you have to turn your way. Otherwise, you will get big trouble. The general asked again, why? Uh, how, how could you boldly say to me? Say, the private said, this is a lighthouse. <laughs> this is a lighthouse. Please turn your way. Do you understand? Yeah. That's the one who, who have to keep this kind of mindset, who really want to evangelize and then deliver the truth, right? There's no way to turn back. Why? This is a, we, are, we are like a lighthouse. Right? Whoever come to me, you know, keep on com coming uh, continuously, this is a big trouble, right? Likewise, uh, this is why the opposite said, mm? uh, no choice. Mm? We are the one who can uh, tell the truth to you. Mm? That's why Hebrews chapter 10, let's see Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 35. Let me read here. Now let's read together. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. You know, you, uh, uh, you have to think about this. If you cast away your confidence, you know, your voice and your, your story and then your pressing is really helpless. Right? And powerless. Why? Wow, you already lost your confidence. Are you convinced with this truth? Hmm? Are you? If you lose it, you cannot 
uh, say uh, a strong heart, and then your 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 preaching is kind of you know mumbling something, right? Oh, you 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 should know uh, Jesus died for you. That's all, right? So in, in our general in our society also, we can see some people, the righteous people, right? And then some old man, he was about hit by the sub train, young man rush into him and then saved him, right? This old man can live five years more. But this young man called as a righteous person, right? And he got a reward from the mayor. We can see this kind of story in our society, right? Um, at my honeymoon, I was accompanied with a cardiac doctor, you know? Uh, during the entire period, he always talking and talking about the surgery story and this operating room, right? And then he cut some hearts and then, you know, seizures cut like that. This is a huge size of amount of the muscle. And then cleaning and then put it back and then stitch again with the, the protein clip and then the, restore the blood and then pumping again. And then the, if, when, if the heart is not beating and then uh, give some electric shock. After that, you know, touching that muscle, and then he gives a massage, you know, massage. And then he used to say, abracadabra, you know. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the heart is beating. That is really a stunning story, right? And then he talking to me again and again. And then I, I heard that, wow, you are a really amazing person. But when I look at, uh, uh, when I get back my, my Lodging place, and, and I think over and over about that story, you know? Yeah, he was really, uh, he had a great job. And then made him, after success, uh, successful operation, and then made him alive, this man could live 30 years more, 50 years more? What if? If I evangelize someone, he could live how many years? Forever. I'm better than him. <laughs> Right? Yes. Oh, I, 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 that's why I got, I, got, I got my pride. And then next day, I, I, I pray to God, please God, let me, let me tell about tomorrow. Let me, let me tell about my story to him. <laughs> you know? That's why I opened the conversation. No one cared. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, you're a Christian. Okay, good. Mm? And then, oh, yeah, yes, next to the body's dad. Mm? And people interest that. But that's true. You know? Uh, that is the authority was given to us, right? Let's see, Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, <clears throat> verse 18 to uh, 20. Let me read here. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has, given, uh, has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. All the authority was given to Jesus Christ. Uh, now, this authority staying in the church, upon the church, right? Why? Church is body of Christ. That's why church can uh, preach the gospel and church can evangelize the people. All this authority is here now, right? This, this authority in Jesus' time is upon Jesus Christ, right? But he's not here. And now we are here. That's why our authority is really, really important and huge and great. If we keep quiet and zip up our mouth, people will die, destroyed forever, right? This is really huge authority. In Jesus' time, let's go Luke chapter 5. Jesus has the power and authority to redeem the human sin. Chapter 5, verse 24 
chapter 5, verse 24. Luke chapter 5, verse 24. Let me read here. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth of to forgive sins. To forgive sins. That's why in Jesus' time, Jesus has authority and power to forgive human's sin at the place immediately, right? But that authority is here upon us. We are holding that. That's why this is really solemn uh, and sacred uh, authority. We have it, right? But uh, even we have this authority, we, we um, used to stuck in some situation and difficulties that is really huge and great. That's why we don't even think about this authority which is given instead of Jesus Christ. We have to look into this one. So, you know, apple trees. Uh, there is a root of apple tree, right? Uh, it, let's pretend this one. There is one root. But this root is apple tree root. This tree will bear what fruit? Apple, right? And another root is a grape tree. Uh, this grape tree uh, can produce and bear the grape, right? What if our root is Jesus Christ? We can bear which one? Our root is Jesus Christ. If our root is Jesus Christ, what kind of fruits could be bear through us? Something involved and related with Jesus. Do you agree with this? Yeah, this is natural things. If you really got saved, right? But Satan, he had a great strategy. This has never been changed so far. Wait, all, why? Always work. You know, Satan pushed one Christian at the corner of the physical flesh things on earth. They couldn't imagine how to evangelize, right? Jesus overcome everything on earth, right? Which means, um, no matter what, beyond our imagination, he, he could help us to move on as a Christian, right? But Satan always pushes us with this uh, earthly matter and then push us in, in the corner, stay there, don't come out, right? Because of this, so many Christians, they lost, already lost their power. So let's see, First uh, Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Let me read here. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Right? Are you ready? Defense yourself to hmm, everyone who has asked you a reason for the hope that is in you. But if you don't have this hope in you, probably you can say no, anything, right? This is very important. Here are things. Uh, already you have experience about this. Mm. As a truly born Christian, um, they don't know how to evangelize. Uh, it's okay, they could learn how to evangelize, right? But this is a matter. Even they, they, can te they testified, they, are got, they got saved, and then they always belong to Christ, and Christ, that's why they want to be called as a Christian, but they don't evangelize. You know, whenever we'll be together, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. You know, the gospel is good. Yeah, Jesus, he's a good person, good man, good savior but they don't evangelize. Why? I already told you. Look at the angel. Angel, they couldn't preach the gospel. Why? They never experienced the gospel, right? They don't know what is gospel. They don't know, they don't have any experience to receive the salvation. They don't, they don't have any experience ex uh, experiencing the heavenly grace. That's why angel cannot preach the gospel, right? Likewise. Yes, even, even they, can, they could be called as a nice person and generous person, right? But they cannot preach the gospel. 
That's why uh, truly non-born in Christian, truly non-born in Christian, they, they imitate Christian life for the meantime, right? But they don't evangelize. They don't know what it is. Do you understand? But it's truly born in Christian. We're different, right? I don't know how to preach. Hmm? I don't have enough skill to deliver this, uh, this uh, great message um, uh, sophisticated, but my heart is burning, right? My heart is burning. Let's see, uh, Jeremiah, chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. Let's read together. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his words was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. Yes, I was weary of holding it back. This is a true mindset of truly born Christian. I don't know how, but I want it, right? Because of this honest desire and desperate heart, right? No matter what, they try to find out the way, right? So um, we do our Bible seminar in order to help the people to be saved, right? This, you know, this is our trial and error. We did our best to saving soul, right? That's why we do this kind of Bible seminar. We also expecting me. Do you know that? Yes. yes. Before that they come, uh, please be prepared and then please be ready, right? That's why. Uh, why sh should we evangelize? Because that is our obligation, right? And that's the same purpose of Jesus came down to the earth. That's why we, 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 we have to do this. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, thank you for uh, giving this chance to learn your words. Please use us as a great instrument in this world to preach the gospel. And also please use us and mold us and burn us for the glory of God. Your kingdom is fully ready to welcome us. Please let us be prepared, um, come into that kingdom. And we are facing our English Bible seminar. Please let us do our best. This is our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who loves us always. Amen.